As you know, I'm kind of the tech pro, and today I'm going to show you how to set up TensorFlow in your system in Jupyter Notebook. Now, if you look at my screen, you will see that when I say import TensorFlow as TF, you can see the error that says no module named TensorFlow. My previous tutorial where I did uh, start getting started with TensorFlow, you can see many people were having the same complaint. You can see no module named TensorFlow. I you come down, I got an error, no module named TensorFlow. So this is the problem. I'm going to show you exactly how to solve it. So and I've made out a step-by-step -step at this point, at this place. So I remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. So let's just get started. So the first thing we are going to do, we are going to uninstall everything Python from our system. The reason is because sometimes some persons will go to command prompt and try to do PIP install. And if you do PIP install, for instance, you do PIP install TensorFlow. And after doing this, while it may run or it may not run, you will still have the same error in Jupyter Notebook trying to use TensorFlow because TensorFlow is a different kind of model than Pandas or SKLine or Matplotlib. TensorFlow is a completely different thing altogether. It works in a different kernel or in a different environment than normal uh, models we use. So it works in a different kernel. From here, it works in a different kernel. All right, so let's follow the procedure. First, let me just close this, close all. And I'm going to also close the, I'm, I'm also going to close command prompts. And finally, I'm going to close Jupyter Notebook prompt. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to uninstall everything Python from my system. Follow this procedure and that is going to help you a lot. Uh, of course, if you know what you are doing, you can skip ahead to uh, the, the, the to, to, uh, you can skip ahead in the video. So first I'm going to go to add remote programs. Now, why we are uninstalling everything is that when we use Anaconda to manage our Python installation and work with machine learning models, Anaconda can install everything. You can use Anaconda to set up everything you need to set, set up using Anaconda. So in this way, you don't have models installed in different places in your system. All right, so at this point, I'm going to add remote programs. Okay, so right here in add remote program, I'm simply going to look for Anaconda. Uh, I'm going to look for Anaconda and I'm going to install it. So this is Anaconda, I'm going to just uninstall it. Yes, uninstall. And if I scroll down, maybe I'll see Python and I'm going to uninstall it as well. So scroll down. So, okay, for now, there is no Python in installed in my system. So Anaconda goes out, uninstall everything. After uninstalling Anaconda, you can as well go to program files and check for, for Anaconda or Python and remove it completely. So I'm simply going to go to program files to check if there is another installation of Python. So I'm going to come here, go to program files, and I'm going to tap to P. So now there is no Python. I'm going to check another drive, drive D. I'm going to go to program files and I'm going to check for P. So for now there is no Python installed. So this is Anaconda which we are uninstalling right now. And you can see that I'm going to just delete the Anaconda folder. Delete. All right. So the next thing we are going to do while there's an installing, let's go to the website Anaconda download and download a copy of Anaconda. So just go to Anaconda, uh, Anaconda downloads. So we are going to use Anaconda for Python 3.7 because this is a September 2019. So go to Anaconda. Python distribution, and we are going to select uh, Windows because this is an installation for Windows, and I'm going to choose download for 64 bit because I'm running on 64 bit system. So I'm going to just click on it to download. Depending on your download speed, uh, this is going to take a few seconds. For me, it stays two minutes because my speed, download speed for me, my internet connection is a bit fast. All right, so I'm going to just Closed and we just wait a couple of seconds for this 
to complete uninstalling. So we can see that the file uninstalled completely. Anaconda is completely uninstalled. I'm going to click next. Finish. Perfect. The next thing is to install Anaconda. I've downloaded it and it's right here in my downloads. Um, all right, let me look for it. Anaconda. Okay, you can see it right here. So I downloaded it twice. So I'm simply going to run it. Now pay attention to Anaconda installation because there's something you need to take note of during installation of Anaconda. So it starts up. Um, all right, so the installation wizard comes up like this. I'm going to just click on next. Agree. Uh, just me, all users, uh, it's okay. I click all users and I'm going to say nice. It's likely going to ask me to enter the credentials. Yes, it's okay. And now, now this is very, very important. Install it in a, in a directory that the file path does not have any space at all. So in this case, I'm installing it in drive C, program data anaconda. But I, rec I would like to install it in drive D drive D, let me see, do I have program data here? So program data, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I'm going to install it in drive D in the same part, but this time in drive D and say next. So at this point you can choose add an anaconda to system path variable, but for now leave it blank exactly the way it is and just go ahead to in uh, install it. Now it's going to take a couple of seconds, so let's wait for a second for it to install. So as you can see, the, the installation completed successfully. I'm simply going to go next. Uh, next. So if you want to use JetBrains or uh, PyCharm, don't worry yourself. Don't install anything separately outside Anaconda. All right, so I'm going to uncheck this because we are just done with what we are doing. Okay. Open Anaconda Navigator. So go to your program files. And now we have Anaconda 64 b Everything is new. I'm going to just go to Anaconda Navigator. That is what you should open so that we can set up Jupyter Notebook because Jupyter Notebook is what you are going to use to work with TensorFlow. So we have Anaconda Navigator open right now. I have a number of applications that we can set up that we, we can use to work with uh, create machine learning models. Next step here says I uh, installed Jupyter Notebook. I've installed it before now. It's how it follows from the previous installation. And I'm going to click on environment. So click on environment at this point. And we are going to create a new environment. Of course, you have the steps for you here. Create a new environment. So I'm going to just click on create here and give it a name TensorFlow. And choose the Python version here. So, okay, just choose Python at this point. Yeah, so choose Python 3.7, not 2.7. Choose Python 3.7 and click click on Create, okay? So it takes a while to set up the environment. So once the environment is set up, we are going to come to this site and choose not installed. And we are simply going to search for TensorFlow. So you can see TensorFlow right here. But for now, our environment is still coming up. So let's give a couple of seconds. So right now, our environment is set up completely. So I'm going to click on the environment. I already clicked on it. And I'm going to choose TensorFlow. So don't go ahead to choose many other things. Uh, just choose TensorFlow, uh, this one. And so when you select TensorFlow from here, okay, select it and just click on apply right here in the lower right and click on apply. So it's going to add the TensorFlow package or the, yeah, the TensorFlow package to the TensorFlow environment. This is how to set up TensorFlow, but now we are not done because we are actually going to test it after now. Go ahead to click on apply and it takes some time to apply. After now, we're also going to set up Keras. And this is what you already know. You simply click on this place and click on apply. So I'm going to do it as well. So one thing you can now see is that there are two environments there. We have the base 
and we have the TensorFlow. We are working with normal Python projects, or normal data analytics projects, maybe Pandas and stuff like that. You use the base, but if you want to work with TensorFlow, then you are going to use the TensorFlow. So how does it work? You need to go back to home. If you go back to home at this point, if you if you drop down to application, you can see the same two environments here. We have base and we have TensorFlow. If we go to base, you'll see that Jupyter Notebook is installed and a few other things are installed as well. Okay, so we can't install any more things in base for now, especially we are talking about Jupyter Notebook. But if we, yeah, so if we go to TensorFlow, you'll see that in TensorFlow, uh, we need to install Jupyter Notebook. So that is one thing we need to do. We need to put Jupyter Notebook uh, in the in the TensorFlow environment so that we'll be able to use JupyterFlow in that environment. So at this point, I'm going to just come to Jupyter Notebook and just click on install, okay? So it takes a while, so we just have to allow it to complete the installation. So at this point, you can see that our installation of, of Jupyter Notebook in TensorFlow have completed, and actually, in, it's installation of Jupyter Notebook in the environment we created so we can actually come here and click and launch it. But what I'll do is to go to program files and open it from there. So go to program files and choose Anaconda. Now you are, you, you are going to see Jupyter Notebook, Notebook two times, one Anaconda, the base package, uh, the base environment and Jupyter Notebook, the TensorFlow. So let's choose the TensorFlow. So anytime you are going to be working with TensorFlow, you are going to be using uh, the TensorFlow environment that we created. And the reason is because TensorFlow uh, works in a, a, a bit a different way than normal data analytics because it's kind of resource intensive application or model. So at this point, we are going to try to import uh, Jupyter Notebook, um, import TensorFlow now, and we see that everything, the problems is solved. So at this point, let me create a new notebook, Python 3. So, and we are going to do the same import with the that failed. Okay, um, so if I now come here to say import TensorFlow as here, and I'm going to run it, you can see that it imported successfully without any problem. And I'm going to come here and say from TensorFlow import Keras. We'll also see that it will run successfully so let me run it at this point so you see everything run successfully and this is how to solve this problem again i like to remind you to subscribe to my channel hit the subscribe button below leave a comment for me and also feel free to like the video and uh, we'll see you in the next class